Michael Brown with Solar Ray coming to you from Orlando, Florida. Uh, coming to you with some questions in partnership with Renewable Nation. Um, consumer questions, hopefully sort of common questions so that it can um, cross over to what other people in other states might um, be asking or in other regions um, regarding the solar industry and solar installations. So the first question is coming to us from Connecticut, and that is from Janine. Hi, my name is Janine from Connecticut, and my question is how much would it cost for me to put solar panels on my roof? Um, I've often thought about doing it, but the cost um, always kind of held me back. Number two, I'd like to know if the solar panels can charge up my hot water heater and my AC. I feel like those are the two biggest um, users of energy in my house. So it would definitely have to help out with that in order for it to be worth it for me to install solar panels. So let's hit the cost part first. So regionally, we have seen, and also in Florida, um, rebates uh, <laughs> are uh, something that drives the price of solar up because then consumers are willing to pay more out of pocket if they're going to get a prize. It's kind of like uh, buying fiddle faddle or just your regular caramel corn or um, uh, ja uh, cracker jacks. So you get a prize inside. So um, the end result is, is that everybody ends up paying about the same at the end of the day. Incentives are not, rebates are not, um, because uh, we, and we've seen this and, and also we can cross-reference through Solar Reviews, which is a site that'll come up. Um, this will help you uh, search for contractors in your area and you're gonna look for a lot of experience, you're gonna look for good reviews. And then there's other little benchmarks also. But you can also check out the average installed price per watt. Um, I would highly recommend, this is contracting work. This isn't an iPhone. This isn't um, your corner uh, store electronics where you can go in and exchange or anything else like that. This is house work. Okay, so this is contracting work that is going to be done on your house. So it is my opinion that it's best to find a local contractor uh, that is qualified that you can verify through solar reviews uh, NABSEP, which we'll also post on the on the video and uh, um, also uh, Well, those are the two things the solar reviews and NABSEP is where I would suggest you start looking for your contractors and For the other incentives that are available to you. There's desire and that'll also post up on the video so um, you can go on solar reviews, you can look at your average cost per watt, and um, we found in, <laughs> that's, we're doing this in a renewable energy room, so that's our charge controller starting up. <clears throat> um, so uh, we found that the average installed price with local contractors, not these national franchises, um, look up the reviews for the national franchises before you choose one. I don't care how well respected or how well known the name is, look up the actual consumer reviews for those contractors before you pull the trigger on something just because of a brand. This is like, again, this is contracting work being done on your house. <clears throat> so um, going by local contractors, people based in Connecticut, um, uh, we have found the average installation price being about $4.16 per watt with the low price being $2.90 per watt and the high price being $4.68 per watt. Now, there are incentives available. So there are going to be some rebate programs and some other things either by the state or your utility. That's where you go to the Desire site. Um, D-S-I-R-E, and um, uh, you can look up your state and also the federal um, programs so you can uh, have a less expensive system than what you paid for out of your pocket initially. Get your prize in your Cracker Jacks. But if you're in a state with incentives, you have to take advantage of those because the contractors historically and regionally in states and areas that have incentives they raise their price 
because they know that your end price is going to be lower so they know that they can charge more. I don't like it any more than you do. I'm in a state that has no incentives, but we've had incentives. And when we had incentives, the price was high. Incentives went away and the price came down. Um, and I will tell you what Florida's average price is and what our price is in Florida, if and when the question, and you can respond to these videos and I can message you with the, what the price point is and what you should be expecting to pay for a system in Florida or in a state without incentives. <clears throat> so um, that's about where you're at, okay? So that's price point, okay? And that's per watt, okay? So let's say if you had a 10 kilowatt system, that would be an average of $41,000, okay? On average, it could be less, could be $29,000, and it could be $46,000, depending on who you're going with and what they're offering you and, and the difficulty of the installation and the equipment that they're planning on installing. Um, as far as equipment goes, start scrolling through these other videos <laughs> because, um, and our channel as well, because we have some educational stuff on there where we've actually done field testing. Okay, back to this video. So the second question was, so the first question was price. We hit that, okay, for Connecticut. Now, Connecticut or anywhere else in the world, what a solar system does, okay? So if it's a grid-tied solar system, which means that it's grid interactive and it does not have storage, it does not have batteries, it does not have all the bells and whistles, like you just heard, and I was making an excuse for the sound in the background, that was a charge controller on a battery system because we're in a production room that is completely off-grid. Um, we did that here just so our advertising and our videos would be completely off-grid, completely sustainable, you know, something feather in the cap type thing. <clears throat> However, um, cost effective wise, it's not cost effective unless you are living off grid and or you're in a, uh, an area that is prone to power outages. Stay away from the bells and whistles and the additional equipment. Less is more in uh, um, um, most cases. In uh, The less electronics you have, the less likely you're going to have failures and less likely you're going to have problems, less likely you're going to have failures. But let's say uh, a 10 kilowatt system, a 10 kilowatt system, well, let's, uh, so <clears throat> will it power my hot water? Will it power my AC? So really what you're being billed on and what uh, the system does is it produces kilowatts, kilowatt hours over time, kilowatts over time, kilowatt hours, and you consume kilowatts over time, kilowatt hours. <clears throat> and what, uh, so what um, you'll end up getting a quote for either something that is going to match your 24 hour consumption of kilowatt hours in the available average daylight hours per day in your region, um, what the system can produce in daylight hours on average uh, in your region uh, versus what you're consuming over 24 hours, because kilowatt hours. So it's just this much minus this much, okay? And that's where you end up. So it's not really powering anything. It is energizing your electrical system in your house. So you, during the daylight hours, you will be using renewable energy and possibly depending on the size of your roof and your consumption, um, possibly it'll be powering more than your home, in which case it'll be back feeding the grid. And then hopefully in your region, I didn't look up all the Connecticut uh, utility rules and the uh, Public Service Commission rules for um, utility inter interconnection, but hopefully you have net metering. Um, and then you'll be basically be getting kilowatt hour for kilowatt hour until you end up with a surplus and then uh, depending on the rules set by the Public Service Commission um, and or additional uh, incentives, possibly, which is a rare thing with utilities, but sometimes they do offer some additional incentives for renewable energy. Um, you will get some benefit for the surplus kilowatt hours that you have put back after you subtract the kilowatt hours produced from your 24 hour consumption on a monthly basis because you're billed on a monthly basis. So that's really how it works. You're not really 
powering the hot water and you're not really powering the AC. And in fact, even these systems that you see that say that they're uh, an air conditioning system that is a solar air conditioning system, it really is not. It's just that the interconnection point for the solar system happens to be with the uh, electrical overcurrent for the air conditioning system. So it's not really powering the air conditioner and, and the air conditioner just works off the grid as normal. It's just that the interconnection point, the point where you tap into your electrical um, system with the solar system happens to be at the same place where there's the overcurrent for the uh, air conditioning system. So um, that's kind of a smoke and mirrors thing, but it's not, uh, it's, it's normal equipment. Um, okay, so uh, just a, a, um, <clears throat> a quick uh, go over again. Your average costs, I would say, in uh, Connecticut would be right around for, let's base it on a 10 kilowatt system. Don't know what size your roof is. Don't know what your average kilowatt hours per month are. But let's just say it's a 10 kilowatt system. Your average cost would be about 41,000, depending. You could be down around 29, all the way up to 46, your quotes. But get more than one quote, for sure. Um, the companies that you ask to come out to get quotes, cross-reference through the North American Board of Certified Energy Practitioners in your area, and you can look it up right here. Um, and then you go regionally, and then you find contractors that uh, are in your area. Um, and, and you also go to Solar Reviews and look these guys up and their companies here um, to find out what the reviews are, and whether they have problems with customer service, whether they, how long they've been in business. Um, and then something that we always tell people to do here in state because uh, we're booming in Florida is to look up the company, it, you know, your department of corporations in your state and actually see if what they're claiming is true because honesty is, you know, it's a rare thing, <laughs> but uh, uh, when you find somebody who what they publish and what they claim matches what reality is, you're, you're getting somewhere. So you hit all those bullet points um, and then get quotes, get more than one. You know, it might be a little bit of homework, but that's the homework. There's not a lot of Google education out there. It's common belief. Um, the old saying used to be common knowledge, but it's not anymore because it's not knowledge. Knowledge imparts some uh, understanding or wisdom. <clears throat> There's no wisdom in the internet because there, is, there really isn't without actually seeing some uh, research or actually seeing the test being done in front of your eyes. Because the, anybody with a camera uh, and a voice uh, can publish on the internet, okay? And it's just a matter of how charismatic they are, not really about what they know. Uh, and that's unfortunate, um, but it's true. So um, do your due diligence, uh, use the resources that we're posting up here. We'll do, uh, so uh, I'll have uh, Vladimir, he's my marketing guy, I'll have him text these or post them up in front of me. So you need to uh, very first, Look at um, solar reviews, and that'll give you, uh, um, and look up your region, and that'll give you uh, um, the contractors, the reviews, and you can look at how aged their reviews are. Um, look up the contractors that you think are good. Uh, go to the NABCEP site and look up individuals in your area, um, and they have contact information there as well. Um, and then, um, after you do that, <clears throat> uh, get your, um, people to come in and give you quotes. And then you're going to want to also double check on all of their quotes with, uh, the desire D S I R E page, um, for state and federal incentives, um, to make sure that they're offering everything that you want and then pose the questions based on those things. Um, so I'm pretty sure I covered just about everything. If there's any other questions, please leave them in the comments below and we'll be happy to answer. Michael Brown, Solar Ray, have a great sunny weekend.